Hey, what's going on everybody? It's video 44. So I just realized that I had forgotten something that was very, very important when I was speaking about the Lakers possibly using Dennis Schroeder um, in whatever trade um, to possibly maybe go to Chicago in the event that maybe the Pelicans uh, do not um, allow him to go to the Bulls. They match his offer and keep him. Uh, if that were the case, then I would imagine the Pelicans or rather the Bulls, excuse me, would be looking for a point guard. As to which they said they don't want Schroeder, so maybe we could try to find a different place for him. And I was saying, you know, maybe we could try to send him, I don't know, to the Pelicans, Schroeder to the Pelicans, and then the Lakers could possibly take back some value from maybe both of those teams or one of those teams or somehow or something like that. I mentioned Kobe White, possibly somebody the Lakers could take back. But then after, you know, Listening back to the video and then listening to a few other videos, it, it dawned on me that I was completely oblivious. The Lakers are trying to utilize Schroeder's value to bring in Buddy Yield. That's the focus. So they're not looking to do any deals to bring in any other players like a Kobe White or somebody like that. Unless Buddy is dealt somewhere else in a separate deal, I would imagine the Lakers are only going to be looking to bring a player in a player in, in terms of a team, a different team into the trade that they already have for Westbrook so that they can pry Buddy out of Sacramento. So that's who the Schroeder money is reserved for uh, in theory. Now, I don't know if he's getting all of that, but what I'm saying is we have to use Schroeder to get him, and that's the priority. So, yeah, that whole Kobe White soliloquy, that could apply. It's not. I'm not saying something like that couldn't apply, but I was using more so my brain to hypothetically figure out how I can get Schroeder somewhere and take back something. But um, I didn't want to mislead people or make people say, what the hell, what about Buddy? I just forgot about him. <laughs> Literally, I, I was just in a moment where I was thinking about only what I was thinking about. So the thing that the Lakers are doing right now, from what I understand, is just simply waiting to see how all the, everything shakes out so that they can find a way to fill out their roster. And for the time being, um, what I understand is that Trevor Ariza is all but agreed, and Carmelo Anthony is very close to an agreement. Rudy Gay is expected to sign. All these guys are expected to sign for the mid-level. Um, Wayne Ellington may be on board. So it's a lot of different names that are trying to trying to see if they can get their spot here. They're more than willing to take a pay cut to play here. And um, Wesley Matthews is another name I'm hearing the Lakers are probably going to be uh, bringing back. So, you know. Uh, Danny Green, that's another name. So keep an eye open for for all these different forwards who are trying to get back to get to this team and, and contribute to what we're trying to do. And um, I say bring as many of them as you can, as <laughs> many of them in as possible. They all know they're going to have to take massive pay cuts. They all know uh, that they're probably going to have to make some, some severe sacrifices on the court as well. Uh, but they can contribute to a, a deep team, and we know how important depth is. Uh, with everything that we just got to going through with the previous season and two seasons. So um, needless to say, we want to get as many bodies as we can on a discount as, uh, as humanly possible. So that that's what the Lakers are doing right now. But for the time being, um, they're keeping their eyes open. They have Schroeder as a golden golden ticket. And uh, hopefully he can land us uh, Buddy Yield, the piece that we're after. Keep an eye on uh, Dennis. Uh, Dennis. Uh, Alex Caruso. I was under the impression that he was not signing back with the Lakers, but I've been reading conflicting things in that regard, which tells me that his his representations probably um, positioning themselves. That's what I take from that. Usually, when you hear conflicting stories in regards to whether or not a player is going to come back to a team that they're ultimately trying to stay with. Usually you'll hear, oh, they're done. And then you'll hear something like, oh, they have other suitors. But then you'll hear something like, well, you know, the Lakers' priority is to bring back Caruso. You're like, wait, well, <laughs> which is it? And likely the, the case is the representation saying they're done. And the Lakers are saying, we're trying to get it done. So there's there's like, um, I, think, I think Alex Caruso wants to be a Laker, but I think he understands that his price tag coupled with what it is that he brings to the table may not be the best fit. Um, for the team at this point. But when you win a championship somewhere, you see 
opportunities for your role to increase based on who's leaving and, and, and the fact that they have hardly no young players on the team right now. I could totally see a guy like Alex Caruso also want to take a pay cut just to stay home. Um, you know, he's established himself as a big time player here in this place. Uh, he has a cult following with the Lakers. And even though he could he could stand to make more money in a different place, uh, will he have an opportunity to win like this? Will he have an opportunity to be loved like this? You know, it's just like Bobby Portis in Milwaukee. I can't imagine why Bobby Portis would want to leave Milwaukee. He's found a home. They love him there. They, they worship the very, you know, ground he walks on up there. And it's similar in a way to Alex Caruso here in L.A. So it's like I could totally see him going after a bag. I could see both of them going after a bag. It may be wise for them and their families to do so for sure. But if you're just talking about wanting to enjoy your career, staying in both of those places are, are, are probably the way to do it. Um, so we'll see what happens with Alex Caruso. I don't know if he still has a spot on this team. But the Lakers say that they have him as a priority. So we'll see. Just because the Lakers have him as a priority does not mean that he's going to be getting priority money or priority offers. It just means that we would like to have him back. <laughs> we could be lowballing him to the ground, still consider him a priority. But it is what it is. Um, I'd love to have him back. I wonder how he's going to play with Westbrook. But to be honest with you, he's played with Westbrook. He used to be on that OKC, Th OKC Thunder team. So at the very least... He knows Westbrook's in and out, basically having played with, you know, him in, in practice. So I don't know how much time they actually had on the floor together. At the time, AC was kind of a G League kind of guy, but he knows him. He knows him well. So I think that can help us uh, with the chemistry. So there's a lot of stuff that that can be said for for bringing back AC, but at the end of the day, it's all about that price tag. So we'll see. Um, as far as everything else, man, I'm just keeping my ears open. It's Kyle Lowry time. You know, we're all looking at that. So. Uh, if you want to know what I think of the situation, go to that previous video. And again, ignore that whole Kobe White thing because the Lakers are after Buddy. And pretty much that's where we are. So my name is BDL44. Thank you all for watching. I'm out.